بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن ولا We begin by praising Allah and sending peace and salutations upon the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam My dear brothers and sisters in Al-Islam Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the creator of all things and everything besides him is created. He is the one who has no beginning and he has no ending. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Allahu khaliqu kulli shay wa huwa ala kulli shay'in wakeel. Allah is the creator of all things and he is the disposer of their affairs. All of those things, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He decides what happens with them. And as for the humans then, we know some of Allah's creations and there are others and many from Allah's creations that we are unaware of. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَيَخْلُقُ مَا لَا تَعْلَمُونَ And He creates and He has created that which you do not know. Meaning that there are creations of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we are not aware of. And today we are discussing one of these creations. A creation from amongst the creations of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which in terms of its size is tiny. Yet it's brought the world to its knees. In terms of the size then it is a creation which you need to look through a special type of electron microscope and magnify it tens and twenty, thirty, forty thousand times before you can even see it. You can't see it with the naked eye. And yet, it has crippled the financial markets, the stock markets. Companies have gone bust because of it. And the humans and the children of Adam, they are living in a state of fear. They are frightened, apprehensive, they're worried, they're paranoid. Because of this little creation, subhanAllah. We all know it as the coronavirus or COVID-19. This is what we want to speak about here today. And it's really important when we begin looking at any affair, that we understand that Al-Islam, it hasn't left us without guidance. There's not a single situation that a Muslim is going to find himself in or a Muslim woman is going to find herself in, new or old, young or old, male or female, living in the east or the west or the north or the south, except that in the book of Allah and in the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we have the answer, the solution and some guidance on that particular issue. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَنَزَّلْنَا عَلَيْكَ الْكِتَابَ تِبْيَانًا لِكُلِّ شَيْءٍ We have sent down and we have revealed to you this book as an explanation of all things. وَهُدًا وَرَحْمَةً وَبُشْرَى لِلْمُسْلِمِينَ And it's a guidance and it's a mercy and it's a glad tiding for the Muslims. So this is a book of guidance. In this book we have an explanation of everything. And also in the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as well. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَأَنزَلْنَا إِلَيْكَ الذِّكْرَ لِتُبَيِّنَ لِلنَّاسِ مَا نُزِّلَ إِلَيْهِمْ وَلَعِلَّهُمْ يَتَفَكَّرُونَ We have sent down to you this dhikr that you may explain to the people clearly what has been revealed to them and in order that they may give thought. Allah says, وَمَا يَنْطِقُ عَنِ الْهَوَى He doesn't speak from his own whims and his own desires. It's not just something that he's making up. إِنْ هُوَ إِلَّا وَحْيٌ يُوحَى it's revelation which is sent down to him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So when looking at the coronavirus, it's really important firstly to look at what Islam has to say about uh, contagious diseases. What's the position of the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with regards to these contagious illnesses? 
In many narrations, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, لا عدوى ولا طيرا ولا هم ولا سفر He said, there's no adwa, this transmission of contagious diseases. There's no adwa, there's no transmission of contagious diseases. There's no طيرا. And طيرا is this uh, superstitious belief in omens that the pagans at the time of the messenger and before the time of the messenger in the days of pre-Islamic ignorance this was a belief in the omens of birds. So they used to believe uh, that if you uh, were going to do something and there was a pack of birds and you scared the birds, if they flew over to one direction, that would be a good omen. And if they flew over to another uh, direction, that would be a bad omen. Allah the point being is that there's no such thing as this. And this was again another type of uh, pre-Islamic Arab uh, the tradition that they used to have and a superstition that they used to have. Wala Safar. And they used to believe that the month of Safar was uh, an unlucky month. So they would avoid doing business and traveling in those types of months. So if a Muslim now was to take this one hadith and he was to hear the statement that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said, La adwa, that there's no passing on of contagious diseases. He might become confused and he might say, hang on a minute, the reality of the situation, it quite clearly contradicts this hadith. That the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was telling us that there's no such thing as a contagious disease. And yet we see that there are contagious diseases. We see that one person gets it and then another and then another and then another. And this is something that we've seen with the coronavirus where it started in, in Wuhan in China and then it's passed and it's been transmitted from one to the other and it has become a worldwide pandemic now. And so we've seen this, this exponential growth. But it's important brothers and sisters that we don't just take one narration and then we leave the rest. Because in another translation or in another narration, another hadith, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, La adwa wa la tiyara wa la hamma wa la safar. He said the same thing. He said the same four things. Then he said, Wa firra min al majdhumi kama tafirru min al asadi. And one should run away from the leper, the one who has leprosy. He should run away from him the way that he would run from a lion. This is important now. Because in one side, the Messenger of Allah is telling us that there's no such thing as contagious diseases. And yet on the other side, he's telling us the one who has leprosy, which is a contagious disease, run, flee from him the way a person would run from a lion. And in another narration, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, La yuridanna mumridun ala musihin. Do not put the ill with the healthy. Do not put the ill animal with the healthy animal. Do not put the ill person with the sick person. So we're quite clearly getting you know, what's known nowadays as social distancing. Stay away from, or what they're calling it now, if there's a person who's ill, etc. Stay away from that person. Distance yourself. Social distancing. Staying away from people who might potentially have that illness. Abu Hurair radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he also said, that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said that the cattle which are suffering from a disease, they should not be mixed with the healthy cattle. Okay, don't mix those which are healthy with those which are sick. In other words, we uh, separate between them. So quite clearly in the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we have a uh, caution against mixing with those who are ill. So quite clearly we have a caution against contagious illnesses like coronavirus. Now, the next hadith which I'm going to bring to you perhaps brings it all together. Why is it in one side we have him saying sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that there's no such thing as a contagious disease. In the other side, he's telling us to run from the leper the way we run from a lion. He's telling us to not put the ill with the healthy. Perhaps this next hadith will bring it together and we'll be able to make jam'a, we'll be able to reconcile between all the narrations. Okay? Abu Hurair radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he said that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said, there is no adwa, la adwa, as we've heard before. There's no such thing as contagious diseases being passed on in this way. A Bedouin man who heard that, he said, oh messenger of Allah, don't you see how when the camels, they are healthy, and then a diseased camel, it mixes with them, 
Don't you see how they all get or they become infected with that disease? Don't you see how when there's a healthy camel and then a diseased ill camel is mixed with those camels, then they also get that illness. So we're quite clearly talking about contagious diseases, contagious illnesses. And this is the point now what the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, he said, then who conveyed, who gave that illness to the first camel? And this is the crux of this issue. That when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, La Adwa, it's as if he was saying, Illa bi idnillah, that there is no transmission of contagious diseases except by the permission of Allah. So the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he was teaching us and was very careful to emphasize to us that these illnesses in and of themselves, they cannot, they cannot harm you and they cannot decide and they don't have the ability to afflict a person except by the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is really, really important. So when we put together all of the texts of the Quran and of the Sunnah, we see that the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he warned us against uh, contagious diseases. He warned us against mixing the healthy with the ill. He told us to run away from the one who has these types of illnesses. But at the same time, he also is emphasizing to us that this happens by the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What's the benefit of this brothers? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he mentions in the Quran that when Ibrahim alayhi salatu salam was thrown into the fire of hell, or rather thrown into the fire that the people had built, a huge fire it was. And Ibrahim was catapulted and thrown into that fire. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, قُلْنَا يَا نَارُ كُونِي بَرْدًا وَسَلَامًا عَلَىٰ Ibrahim." We said, O oh fire, be cool and be safe for Ibrahim. So Allah never allowed the fire to burn him. Allah took away the ability of the fire to burn Ibrahim. Why? Because the ability was given by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the first place. When the uh, knife, it, it, it was uh, not able to cut Ismail alayhi salatu wasalam. So the point is the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam is... Uh, is, is, is attaching the hearts of the people to Allah and making them trust and rely solely in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But the sunnah didn't stop there brothers. So we know that the sunnah now warns against putting and the mixing of the ill people with the healthy people. And this is why we find uh, the masajid are now closing down off the back of these types of ahadith. We know that this is why the, uh, the, 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 the schools are now closing down. The uh, places of gathering now are being limited and people are being told to practice what's known as social distancing. This is extremely important. And we see the basis of this in the teachings of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam over 1400 years ago before science could ever tell us in this much detail anything along these lines. The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam gave us this guidance. But it didn't stop there. The Sunnah teaches us what to do in the instance that this plague or this illness, that this virus, it breaks out. Had the people followed the Sunnah to the T and to the letter, it wouldn't have escaped past the area where it was. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, إِذَا سَمِعْتُمْ بِالطَّاعُونِ بِأَرْضٍ فَلَا تَدْخُلُوهَا If you hear of a plague or if you hear of an outbreak in a place, in a land, do not enter it. That's the first point. If you're outside of this place and you hear that there's something going on, a plague, and a, a transmission, a contagious illness, virus, don't enter into that place. And it didn't stop there. وَإِذَا وَقَعَ بِأَرْضٍ وَأَنْتُمْ بِهَا فَلَا تَخْرُجُوا مِنْهَا And if it happens to take place in an area, in a land, and you are there, don't leave that area. Brothers and sisters, we have the perfect basis for the perfect quarantine here. Had everybody followed this, it wouldn't have got out of Wuhan in China. Because the people who were in that area, they would have stayed there and it would have been contained. And the people who were outside of that area, they wouldn't have entered there. And so it wouldn't have spread. 
And this is again that we find that the Sunnah, as I was saying in the book and the Sunnah, we have everything that we are going to need to deal with any potential situation. What about the plague now? What is the plague in and of itself? What does the Sunnah say about this? Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, the wife of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, she said, I asked the Messenger of Allah about these plagues. And you know when we're talking about الطاعون uh, and the plague we're not just talking about something that's known linguistically as the plague it's anything which is uh, which is contagious and it spreads it's you know it's it's a widespread illness this is known as a طاعون okay or it comes under the ruling of الطاعون so the point is Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha she said I asked the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam about the plague and he said it is a punishment from Allah that he sends upon whomever he wills. But Allah has made it a mercy for the believers. A person might say, how is it a mercy? Somebody catches coronavirus. How is that a mercy? We can understand how it's a punishment, but how is it a mercy? The Prophet wasallam he continued and he explained, he said, any servant who resides in a land afflicted by the plague and he remains patient, hoping for the reward from Allah, knowing that nothing will befall him except what Allah has decreed, he will be given the reward of a martyr. Meaning if a person, he stays in that land and he knows that this is the sunnah, the messenger of Allah, he said, فَلَا تَخْرُجُوا مِنْهَا So don't leave that place. If you're in a land, and, you, and it comes to you and it happens in that land, don't leave that place. You stay there, you remain patient, you hope from, for reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and then you lose your life as a result, you, inshallah, will be given the reward of a martyr. And this, it comes under the statement of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that strange, amazing is the affair of the believer. There's goodness for him in everything and this is only for the believer. If some, uh, if some goodness comes to him, then he's thankful and this is good for him. And if some difficulty comes his way, then he's patient. That is also good for him. And so we see, brothers, that yes, these calamities on the face of it, subhanAllah, you know, they are uh, big calamities. But at the same time that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, insha'Allah, bi-idhnihi tabaraka wa ta'ala, he's going to give the reward of martyrdom to those Muslims who die as a result of this and they remain patient and they know that nothing can afflict them except what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has already decreed for them. Now if we make it a bit more specific to coronavirus, people are saying, oh Allah is punishing the Chinese people or the Chinese government because of their treatment of the Muslims in their land. They've put the Muslims in their concentration camps and these types of things and as a result of that Allah is punishing them by this. Uh, brothers uh, and sisters, importantly this is uh, not permissible to say because this is one of the uh, aspects of the unseen and it's not permissible to speak about that except without an evidence. What they are doing is a great injustice. What they're doing to the Muslims over there is a great wrong and it's a great injustice and no doubt it needs to be spoken about and needs to be criticized and uh, awareness needs to be raised about it. However, we cannot make a specific, uh, we cannot make a specific thing, a specific occurrence and say this is a specific punishment for a specific sin. That's really important. If Allah and His Messenger alayhi salatu wasalam, have not mentioned it to us, then nobody can come now and say this coronavirus is a punishment for them because of the way they've treated the Muslims in their, in their land. This is not permissible. But what we can do, brothers, is speak in general terms. So we're not making this general, we're not saying this is specific to China, but we're saying this is general. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has decreed these illnesses and these problems, these trials, uh, the evil and the injustice that is taking place. Allah has decreed these with knowledge. They don't occur except by the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He has decreed them in a very precise way that he has decreed them and he controls the amount and everything and nothing happens except by his decree. 
and that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has decreed them with his knowledge. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Surah Yusuf, وَاللَّهُ غَالِبٌ عَلَىٰ أَمْرِهِ وَلَكِنَّ أَكْثَرَ النَّاسِ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ Allah has full power and control over his affairs, but most of the men, they do not know. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, وَيَفْعَلُ اللَّهُ مَا يَشَاءُ And Allah does whatever he wills. This is really important. That the slave, he realizes, my creator, he does whatever he wants. It's not for me as the slave to begin to question Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's not for me as the slave to begin to ask, why, how can Allah do this? This is so wrong, etc. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, لا يُسْأَلُوا عَمَّا يَفْعَلُوا وَهُمْ يُسْأَلُونَ He is not questioned about what he does, but they will be questioned about what they do. It's not for me and you brothers and sisters to question Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But then Allah also tells us in another part of the Qur'an, about the sins and the transgressions and the evil, the corruption that we see, Allah tells us about this. ظَهَرَ الْفَسَادُ فِي الْبَرِّ وَالْبَحْرِ بِمَا كَسَبَتْ أَيْدِ النَّاسِ لِيُذِيقَهُمْ بَعْضَ الَّذِي عَمِلُوا لَعَلَّهُمْ يَرْجِعُونَ Allah says, evil, corruption, wrongdoing has spread and has appeared on the land and at sea as well because of what the men, the hands of men, they have earned. In other words, because of what the people have done, because of what the people are doing, because of their transgression and their disobedience, this is why the evil has spread on land and at sea. But then Allah gives us a reason. لَعَلَّهُمْ يَرْجِعُ In order that they may return. Meaning Allah allows us to taste the bad consequences of some of our actions in order that we may rectify ourselves. In order for it to be a wake-up call, if you like. In order for us to come back to the worship of Allah alone. In order for us to follow the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. In order that we may repent for our sins. So there's a very, very clear reason why he allows that to happen. In another part of the Qur'an, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَا أَصَابَكُمْ مِن مُصِيبَةٍ فَبِمَا كَسَبَتْ أَيْدِيكُمْ وَيَعْفُوا عَنْ كَثِيرٌ Whatever of evil and misfortune, whatever of, whatever of calamity falls on you, it's because of what your own hands have earned, and yet Allah forgives much. Meaning Allah doesn't punish you for all of your sins. He forgives a lot, but He just holds you to account and He takes you to account for just a small percentage of that. And as a result of our own sins, these are the problems which occur in the land and on the sea as well. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us what would have happened had he took us to account for every single sin that we, uh, that we do. Allah says, وَلَوْ يُؤَاخِذُ اللَّهُ النَّاسَ بِمَا كَسَبُوا مَا تَرَكَ عَلَىٰ ظَهْرِهَا مِنْ If Allah was to punish the men, for what they have earned, meaning according to what they have earned, if Allah punished them according to their actions, He would not leave a moving creature on the surface of the earth. There'd be nothing left. If Allah punished us for our sins and in line with our sins, remember we said He forgives much, but if He punished us on line with our sins, He would destroy every living creature on the face of this earth. Ikhwani fillah, that shows us. We are sinful, subhanAllah. And many of the issues which we face as a result, they are as a result of our own disobedience, our own negligence, our own shortcomings. Let's look at some potential wisdoms now. We said we don't ask and we don't question Allah. Oh Allah, why have you done this? How could you do this to me? We're not questioning. We're simply looking for some potential wisdoms now. The first thing, brothers and sisters, is that these, this coronavirus, it can be a warning to the disbelievers in general and to the people in general as well. لَعَلَّهُمْ يَرْجِعُونَ In order that they may return. A warning to the disbelievers that, oh you disbelievers, you have armies and you have wealth, you have systems, you have people, you have uh, science. And yet this microorganism, this tiny thing, it can bring you to your knees. Don't you see then that there must be a creator? That these things didn't just come by chance and they didn't just create themselves. 
And a person might say, yes, they came from bats and then they came into another sp- particular type of animal and then that was being sold in the markets of Wuhan and traded. And because of the conditions, it passed on. But the Messenger of Allah asked the Bedouin man, who gave it to the first animal? Likewise, we ask, who gave the illness, who created that illness in the first instance? Because it didn't just appear in the first thing and then it was, uh, يعني, subhanallah, who was the one that pushed that first domino? Or we say, we're just giving an example, who was the one that pushed the first domino and then all of the rest of the dominoes began to fall? So it's a warning to the disbelievers that they see the might and the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That when the creator, he wants to test his slaves and take his slaves to account, the slaves are powerless in front of him subhanahu wa ta'ala. لَعَلَّهُمْ يَرْجِعُونَ In order that the people, they may come back to the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That they come back and they leave off the innovations and they leave off the committing shirk with Allah, associating partners with Allah. That they come and they make their religion sincerely for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. That's the first wisdom, potentially. Another uh, potential wisdom of this coronavirus is that it's a punishment for what we have done. It's a punishment for our actions, as we have said. That Allah allows them to taste just what their hands have earned. So it's a punishment. Because of our sins and our shortcomings, we are being punished. And this is not unjust from Allah. He is the just one and he is the one who, he hasn't punished us for all of our sins, just a small portion of them. The third thing, the third potential wisdom of this coronavirus is that it's a mercy for the believers, like the Prophet ﷺ has said. He told us that the one who dies from it, then he will have martyrdom, inshallah. But not only that, the Messenger ﷺ told us that no worry or grief or anxiety afflicts a Muslim. Even if it's the pricking of a thorn, except that Allah will expiate some of his sins as a result of that. Amazing, subhanAllah. It's a mercy for the believers, those who are patient, those who hope from reward from Allah, those who are, uh, they know that nothing can afflict them except for what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has already decreed for them. The fourth thing, it's a sign from amongst the signs of Allah. Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala says in the Quran, وَمَا يَعْلَمُ جُنُودَ رَبِّكَ إِلَّا هو. Nobody knows the army of your Lord except for him. The soldiers of your Lord except for him. That Allah wa ta'ala, he doesn't need to send a, uh, an earthquake or he doesn't need to send lightning from the sky or he doesn't need to send these enormous beasts. Allah wa ta'ala, he can destroy us with a mosquito or smaller than that. Allah wa ta'ala, can destroy us with these viruses and look at the state of our lives. Look at the chaos in our lives. Look at the worry in our lives. That our Creator, Tabarak wa Ta'ala, He has chosen to test us and punish us with this and to try us with this. And look at the state of worry and grief that we find ourselves in. The fifth potential wisdom is that, my brothers and sisters, it reminds us of our own mortality. It reminds us that we're not going to live forever. It reminds us that, listen, even if you don't die from this coronavirus, death, وَجَاءَتْ سَقْرَةُ الْمَوْتِ بالحق, That the stupor of death is going to come. That moment of death is going to come. So prepare for it. It humbles us. It makes us humble and it makes us realize, you know, I don't have anything now except to turn back to the Creator. I don't have anything with which I can protect myself except by, uh, you know, going back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it should make us prepare for death and that which lies beyond it. On that note, brothers and sisters, if you're not praying five times a day, And this type of calamity which afflicts ourselves and our families and our friends, if that hasn't led us to praying five times a day, the question is what is going to make us change? If you're still not coming closer to Allah and these things are going on around you, then ask yourself, how deep is the covering on my heart? Not is there a covering on my heart? Ask yourself, how deep and how thick is that covering? Because... Even though there's all these problems going on, I'm still not turning back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How do we now tackle this situation? Coronavirus, it's 
found our found its way into the countries where we live it's found out its way into our communities it's found its way into the schools and the masajid and the hospitals uh, and every pretty much every walk of life how do we deal with it now the first thing brothers and sisters is that if you're ill stay away from the people practice self isolation as it's known or as the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he told us don't mix the one who is ill with the one who is healthy this is important don't be selfish brothers and sisters wallahi don't be selfish if you have an illness you are exhibiting signs of coronavirus you've got that dry cough you've got that temperature which is new and it's not something which you've had as an underlying issue or you were suffering from a cold from a few weeks or whatever it is then stay away from the people isolate self isolate as they say you your family stay away from the uh, the rest of the people the second thing don't run away seeking to flee because you might take it with you look at the wisdom let's say you're from a village in asia or you're from a village in africa or you're from a, a place in europe for example and that's where you hail from and the people in that area don't have it because it hasn't reached them because it's let's just say it's a remote area allah has willed for it to be saved you flee from england or you flee from the states and you go back to somalia or you go back to pakistan or india you go back to let's just say uh, poland i'm just making up uh, any any country you go back to those places and you go back to that little village in pakistan and you go back to that little village in sri lanka or india wherever it might be and you take the virus with you you fled from it and you didn't follow the advice of the messenger of allah on the way on the plane Allah knows best how many people you may uh, inflict with that illness and then you go back and then you introduce that illness into an area where it hadn't been there before subhanallah or if it is there you go back and you make it worse in that particular area so brothers don't flee from it stay where you are and be patient hope for reward from Allah and remember that nothing can afflict you except for what Allah has already decreed for you and if you die in this state then inshallah you will have martyrdom the third thing my brothers is that if you have elderly parents or grandparents or you have people with underlying health issues then you have to be extra extra careful you need to stay away and you need to isolate and you need to stay away from them as much as is practically possible okay the fifth thing or the fourth thing is remember those adhkar those duas from the sunnah of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam go out when you go out in the morning say bismillah tawakkaltu ala allah wa la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah say that every single morning when you go out and you will be told that you'll be protected and sufficed etc when you wake up in the morning at fajr and when the sun goes down then read the dua bismillah alladhi la yadurru ma'a ismihi shay'un fil ardi wa la fis sama'i wa huwa as samiul alim no calamity will befall you if you read it in the morning no calamity will befall you until the evening if you read it in the evening no calamity will befall you until the morning by the permission of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you can read these uh, duas and there is so many there are so many in the sunnah of the prophet alayhi salatu wasalam if you go to a place then say a'udhu bi kalimatillah at-tamati min sharri ma khalaq three times etc again there's so many so inshallah go back to the sunnah of the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam and protect yourself with the adhkar make the ruqya read the quran seeking a healing and seeking a cure the quran is a healing from beginning to end so read the book of allah with the intention of seeking the cure take the prophetic medicines take the black seed take the drink of honey uh, you can use the herbal medicines etc use and take the means and then place your trust in allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also uh, brothers I want to speak about those people who are what are they're doing what's known as panic buying. You go to the supermarket and you buy so much beyond what you need. 
and you just buy and you buy and you buy in a panic, you have to see that this is extremely selfish and you are actually making it more difficult for others who are unable to get what they need because you have taken so much more than you need. And so brothers and sisters, we have people hoarding up things like toilet roll and rice and pasta, beans, canned food. And, and, and it's just ridiculous, subhanAllah. And this is something which is not permissible, that you hoard up food, that which is required for others. That which is a requirement for others, things like food and things like medicine, and you go and you hoard it up and uh, you don't allow others to benefit from it. This is haram. Likewise, it's also haram, my brothers, if you have a shop and you're selling things, food and items that people need for you to artificially inf inflate the prices. This is, again, something which is impermissible and you will be sinful. So please, brothers and sisters, let's be people who overcome this together by the permission of Allah. Let's be people who are considerate for ourselves, our neighbors, our families and our loved ones as well. Please, we have to consider the wider community. And in ending, brothers, have good thoughts about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Have good thoughts about Allah. Allah will not wrong me or oppress me. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he knows what's better for me more than I know what's better for myself. Perhaps I love something and it's bad for me. Perhaps I hate something and it's actually good for me in the long term. So we trust in Allah. We rely in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I want to end with what Ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala anhuma he said. He said that when the people, when they threw Ibrahim into the fire, Ibrahim, he said, he said a statement, alayhi salatu wasalam. He said, Hasbunallahu wa ni'mal wakil. Sufficient for us is Allah and what? And, and he's the best disposer of affairs. Meaning he's the best who is in control of my affairs. Okay? Hasbunallahu wa ni'mal wakil. And then he said, when the people came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and they said, That the people they have gathered against you, they've gathered against uh, you, so fear them. Meaning the confederates, the Ahzab around al Medina, all the different tribes, they've gathered together, fear them. They've got a formidable force. Fear them, have, have fear of them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَزَادَهُمْ imana." It increased them in their iman, waqalu, and they said, Hasbun Allahu wa ni'mal wakil. Sufficient for us is Allah, and He is the best disposer of affairs. And that's what we say as well. When the people they say Corona is coming and Corona is going to kill this many people and Corona, 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 we simply say, Hasbun Allahu wa ni'mal wakil. Sufficient for us is Allah. Whatever Allah decides, Allah is enough for us. Tabarak wa ta'ala. Wa ni'mal wakil. And He is the one who is best to control our affairs. If our mothers, they were controlling our affairs, we would feel happy. My mother wants good for me, my mother loves me, etc. Allah tabarak wa ta'ala, He loves the believing slave, the person of Tawheed and the person of the Sunnah. Allah loves that person more than His own mother does. And so we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for afwa and afiyah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for peace and security, safety, well-being. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he protects us from this illness and the Muslims from this illness and our parents and our communities, our young and our old. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he becomes pleased with us. And if this is a punishment from him, that he accepts our repentance and he forgives us and he raises this off of us and he brings honor to the Muslims once again. Jazakumullahu khaira wa sallallahu ala nabina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'een. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.